And what's up guys, Chigs here from Chigs Tech Reviews. Today I've got my hands on a new thin and light laptop by a new brand, a new player in the laptop game. So this is the Avita Liber V and it's the 14 Pro model. Now what's immediately special about this laptop is the fact that it manages to squeeze a 14 inch IPS panel within a 13 inch body. So it's quite compact and light at only 1.3 kgs and it's only 17.4 millimeters in thickness. So you are getting an aluminium alloy chassis and it does feel quite robust and overall a decent build quality although the top does smudge slightly with your fingertips. Now you have the Evita logo in the center and it's engraved in silver. Now I've gone for matte black, but you do have a choice between 14 different colors. So you're definitely gonna find something that suits your taste. Now on the left, we've got a USB 3 headphone jack and a micro SD card slot. And on the other side, you've got a full size HDMI, a type C port and it's power delivery 2.0 charging and display out. You have another USB 3 port and a power socket. Now let's talk about the display. You have a 14 inch anti-glare IPS panel. It's 16 by nine aspect ratio with a 1000 to one contrast and you have a 178 degree viewing angle. So nice looking display, no complaints in the display department. Now the bezels are actually quite tiny on both sides. You're looking at 3.7 millimeters, but you do get the bigger bezels on the top and the bottom. Now on the top you do have a lid and if I just close the laptop and show you the bottom side you can see that lid protrudes. Now it's a totally new design you actually have your one megapixel 720p web camera in the center so no privacy option it's open all the time and you also have your dual microphones on each side. So not sure if I like that design but what is nice is how you can open the laptop with just a single thumb and you do not need to use your other hand to secure the laptop in place. It easily open and closes with one hand. Now this laptop also has a dedicated fingerprint reader on the left and you get a separate power button on the right. Now the fingerprint reader does a pretty efficient job at logging you in instantly, saving you valuable time and effort typing in your password every single time. So always a big fan of a fingerprint reader, especially on Windows laptops. Now you do have a full size keyboard, decent keys, 1.5 millimeter of travel. So it feels great to type on, but it's also backlit, which is always a plus point. And just check out the size of that trackpad. It's very large and it does support four finger gestures. Now quick look at the specs. This laptop is powered by the AMD Ryzen 5 3500U, which is a quad core CPU clocked at 2.1 gigahertz. Now you've got shared graphics with the AMD Raiden RX Vega 8 with eight gigs of LPDDR4 RAM, and you're also getting a 256 gig M.2 SSD. Now general performance of this laptop is pretty good. I've experienced no lag and this laptop is good for general office applications, gaming, web browsing, social media, watching videos, and even some light editing work. The Ryzen 5 is a pretty capable chip which offers enough performance and power to undertake most tasks. Now if we talk about gaming performance, this laptop has shared AMD Vega 8 graphics, so no dedicated graphics, so not really designed to be a gaming laptop. However, most general games from the Windows Store like Asphalt 9, Modern Combat and Candy Crush will play absolutely fine on the highest graphical settings. You can also play older PC titles like San Andreas and Rainbow Six on high graphics. And just to see what happens, I loaded up GTA 5, left everything on default, so resolution was 800 by 600 and graphics set to medium. And the game was actually quite playable at around 30 frames per second. If you try to turn up the resolution, the frame drops will drop drastically. So best bet is to leave it on default or turn the graphics level even lower for a better frame rate. Again, do remember this is not a gaming laptop. I just wanted to push this laptop to its limit to find out how it performs. Now, another plus point in case you do decide to game on it, this laptop does have a built-in cooling fan, which optimizes the airflow, keeping the system running cool. And the fan is also fairly silent. You can hear it, but it's not annoyingly loud. 
Now let's talk about the battery life. This laptop promises up to 10 hours, but realistically, after my tests, I found myself achieving between five to seven hours with normal usage. So for example, watching videos on YouTube, social media, browsing websites, and working on office applications. However, if you switch off the internet and use it as an offline work computer, then you can definitely achieve that quoted nine to 10 hour battery life. Also, if you were to use this laptop just to play games nonstop, then you can expect around two to three hours max. And of course that depends how taxing the game is. So GTA 5 would last a lot less. Now, another thing to note, there is no fast charging and this comes with a power supply and you can check out the voltage for yourselves. So it does take around two and a half hours to three hours to fully charge that 36.7 watt hour battery. So unfortunately, no fast charging. Furthermore, you will find the standard dual band Wi-Fi AC, but unfortunately there is no Wi-Fi 6 or Bluetooth 5. Instead, you're getting Bluetooth 4.2. Now that said, I have not found any issues with the Wi-Fi. Um, I can move around anywhere within the building and still enjoy a strong Wi-Fi connection. Now, unfortunately, this laptop does not have any built-in Ethernet port but you could hook up a USB hub with Ethernet port. Now you are getting Windows 10 Pro pre-installed, activated and ready to use. Now the laptop feels quite snappy in operation. I have not experienced any lag whilst using this laptop. I've surfed the web, shopped online and watched many 4K YouTube videos, which all play nice and smooth. You've also got support for Netflix HD and Amazon Prime Video plays 4K. Now the built-in speakers are actually found at the bottom of the unit. So you have two times one watt speakers and I'm actually underwhelmed by the sound quality. Here is a quick sound test. What's happening? This is what's awesome. So two watts of total power is not gonna blow your mind. In fact, most of the time, the sounds are quite underwhelming. And if you play something with a bit of bass, you're gonna get distortion as well. So you're definitely not getting the best quality built-in speakers. Now here are some benchmark results. So Cinebench, we achieved a multi-core score of 2,213. And you can see the Ryzen 5 has achieved a CPU passmark score of 7,681. So there you have it guys, that was the Avita Libre V 14 Pro. And here are my thoughts, my pros and cons. And in a nutshell, I like the build quality and performance this offers. I was able to use this laptop for more or less any task. It handled gaming, 1080p video editing, and general office applications pretty well. Few issues I found that could be deal breakers for some of you, the poor speaker quality. Fortunately, you can hook up your headphones or speakers via the audio jack, but it's a shame that importance was not given to the sounds. Also, the one megapixel web camera is poor quality, grainy at all times, even with studio lights on. Other than that, you have a pretty nice looking display. Backlit keyboard is also nice. And I'm also liking that large trackpad. There is an effective cooling fan and the fingerprint reader is also spot on. So bottom line, this laptop is good if you're someone who needs portability, battery life, and enough performance to handle their everyday tasks. This is a good everyday office business slash student laptop. However, if you're into multimedia and webcam streaming, you may not be impressed by the native hardware. You may have to use your own sounds and web camera to make things look and sound more beautiful. But for work, office and students, this is a pretty decent, robust business laptop with a great battery life. Now, I do believe this Avita model has already released in India for around 39,000, which is a good price in that country. However, in the UK, this Avita model costs 499, which is very close to the tough competition from brands like HP, Lenovo, Asus, and the most recent, Honor, whose MagicBook 14 offers a very similar specification and feature but Honor did not cut back on their speakers or webcam and offer a few more unique features and a much better overall package and performance in the same price range. So that concludes my review on the Avita Libre V, the 14 inch Pro model. If you have any questions, you guys know exactly what to do. Meanwhile, the links will be in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a brilliant day. I'll see you guys in the next one.